So you've got your new book out, which is uh, Free Speech Matters. So that's out now, right? Yeah, that was out uh, last week, this time last week. What was it that made you feel like you wanted to get something out of this exact point in time? I wanted to write something that could persuade uh, people of the merits of free speech and also understand why people are nervous about it. It was reaching the point where there were so many stories and, and, and it just became perfectly clear to me that people don't understand what free speech means anymore. Mm. And they don't understand why it's important anymore. And, and people are very flippant and casual about the way in which, for instance, our law enforcement agencies seem to be keen to monitor our speech all the time. Uh, we saw this with the big tech as well. People seem very casual about this idea of, of uh, this, these sort of, you know, silicon tech giants with more collective power than any nation state, but none of the democratic ac accountability. Yeah. Yeah just uh, deciding what people can and cannot say. And I'm going to be devil's advocate now and put over the side of the sort of basic, it's mostly left-winger take or, or, or sort of suspicions about free speech, but I'm going to do it in a really whiny, annoying way as well, just so I still get to take the piss. Isn't it just websites exercising their own terms and conditions? Uh, you know, technically, private companies can do uh, whatever they want. Of course mm. they can, but there are all sorts of reasons why that argument is 20 years out of date you know this this we have antitrust laws whenever a small group of companies come together and, and dominate the market but we don't do it for the internet and actually this is now the public square this is where uh, it all happens this is where the discussion takes place and it isn't the case that well you could say it's a private company you could you know so go and go off and make your own platform but then when people tried to do that they nuked parlor didn't they that so it's not the case that you can go off and and, and do your own yeah. thing. And When they say it's just a private company, I do think, yeah, it's the private company that was essentially this, what seeded the Arab Spring, Black Lives Matter and, and, and Me Too. When someone says me private company, I'm thinking of like Wernham Hogg or a sort of, sort of paper distributors, you know what I mean? Like it, it's so palpably more than that. And I wonder if there is like this slight, and ironically, it's a term that the left like to use. There is this strange gaslighting where they're trying to pretend that something's not happening. I'd rather than just go, look, okay, we like these views. This company, largely speaking, hold these views. So we're going to support their right to kick you off. Then you go, all right, now we can have a discussion about it. That's what it is. And also because no one wants to be the person who says they don't agree with free speech. Yeah. So what you'll see is an awful lot of denialism. And that's what we've seen, you know, since Gavin Williamson made his announcement about um, uh, free speech in universities about a week and a half ago, uh, you just had complete denialism, particularly from the left, people saying there is no problem with free speech on university campuses. And then you'll mm. have, you know, someone will say, well, oh, man, what about this report from Policy Exchange this last year, which shows that a substantial proportion of academics won't express their honest points of view because they fear they won't get a promotion. Mm. What about, and they're, oh, no, that's not happening. They'll just deny. It's not even like they weren't even engaged with it. It's just, oh, no, it doesn't happen. What about all the students that say the same? Oh, no, that's just, it's not true. Yeah, okay. why do I get so many uh, Patreons that basically say to me, please don't name check me yeah. uh, on the podcast because I work at a university? Most of the messages that I do get from strangers, if we ignore all the abusive stuff, yeah. um, is, is, is basically people saying, I'm really pleased you're saying this sort of stuff because I, I can't speak out of work. I can't say what I really think, et cetera, et cetera. Are they just all lying to me? Is that is that mm. what it is? Because it's a weird hoax to participate in what most people think. when we talk about the left i make a very clear distinction between what i consider the authentic left yeah which are those who are concerned with class and economic inequality and the faux left the identity politics left who are interested in, in identity above all other things and, and it's typically very upper middle class um and that's that's where you get the guardian and the new statesman uh, come in uh, who i do not think are in any way authentically left-wing that that form of leftism the identitarian form of leftism is essentially hostile to free speech because they believe that language is how we construct reality because they, they come from this postmodern background where they believe uh, that's why they talk about uh how language and jokes normalize hate legitimize hate all of that sort of stuff words of violence you've heard that one quite a bit um yeah. it's, it's just at the heart of their ideology but they still always stop short of saying we don't believe in free speech because they just know from a PR perspective that's not going to go down well but the truth is if you read what they say about this stuff they don't they don't believe in free speech and they do want the state to curtail curtail it they don't they don't see a problem with the, the concept of non-crime hate incidents they don't see a problem with what is it three thousand people arrested every year for offensive comments uh, and they do think that people who uh, who have the wrong opinion should be booted off twitter Bonnie Greer attacked me saying, oh, look, another conservative right winger worried about his uh, 
is free free speech. Um, and uh, of course, I'm not conservative or right wing. You mentioned the Alistair Campbell one earlier. I mean, his thing was yeah, fairly was through that. Well, his was fairly standard, which was, uh, oh, look, another person complaining their free speech is being curtailed while they've got a published, while they've got a, a book deal and they're on the radio and TV talking about it and stuff like that. And it's, um, but of course, I've never, ever claimed that I'm being censored or that mm -hmm. I don't have free speech. So the assumption there is that you can't defend a, a problem that you perceive unless it is directly impacting on you is weird because we don't apply that to anything else well you you, know? you couldn't be a fucking lawyer if that was the case we go well how's this guy being a lawyer he hasn't murdered anybody he hasn't exactly. raped anybody what the fuck does he know so, so much of the assaults are, are just they're just guessing what they think they're criticizing i think they're scared of what you're saying and they need to try and throw you know it was in the same way that the left did at the last election with the tories instead of dealing with the issues head on they sort of escalated the terms of it, which is this is a far right. And then it was, oh, this is a Nazi government. And they're basically sort of saying, if you think anything positive about this person, you're on that platform. And they're yeah. not really engaging with the ideas. And, and maybe it's because they don't really believe in free speech. And that's what it is. And they, but, they don't, but, they, but they can't say that. Well, like, like you say, no one, no one says, I don't believe in free speech. If they were to say, I believe in quite a strictly managed version of speech, you go, fair enough. That's a defensible position. You can debate with that. Well, that's, that's it. Like, I, like Yas, Yasmin Alibi Brown does that. And I respect her for it. She, she does say that she wants the government to censor certain points of view, certain, certain things. You know, I don't agree with it at all, um, fundamentally, but at least she admits it. What most people think. Just to sort of quote an, another sort of left wing sort of trope here. Um, freedom of speech, Andrew, isn't freedom from consequences. Yeah, no one ever said it was it, really. <laughs> I mean, I've actually got a, a chapter in the book called Common Misconceptions, and that's right there at the top. Um, yeah. Because it's so surprising to me, the number of uh, straw men in this world, literally no one. I mean, I even quote three or four Guardian columnists who all say the same thing. They basically say, a lot of people on the right seem to think that free speech means uh, freedom uh, to say what you want without rebuttal. Literally no one thinks that. Well, it's just ridiculous to think that that's even possible. It's not, but it, but no one thinks, this is the thing. What shape would that take where you could just say whatever <laughs> the fuck you want in, right? The <laughs> hateful, racist, bile stuff. And everyone just go, hey man, look, I respect your right to it. No one's, and to, even the worst racist isn't expecting no pushback. What most people think. The idea that there is anyone out there who thinks that they should not be criticised in any way for their view mm. is, is so palpably not true well it's almost like you know it, it sounds a bit mafioso doesn't it it's like where they're trying to tell you something but not say it like uh freedom of speech uh, it's not freedom <laughs> from consequences Billy, yeah? <laughs> it is like there's, a threat there's it always like yeah i'm just saying there could be consequences you say that you don't think trans women should compete in women's sport i'm just saying one of those <laughs> dumbbells might land on your fucking head <laughs> Do they realise that calling somebody one of these free speech guys, free speech guy doesn't sound like a bad thing. I have to say, it sounds like a pretty, if, if like you had a sort of philosophical superhero, that would be one of the better ones. This is one of the main things I address in the book is this idea that free speech has become associated with the right and even the far right, mm. uh, which is, can you remember all the, you know, when the fascists came to power, remember the March on Rome, it was all about free speech. That's what they were, they were pushing for. And I guess that's what they're, they're suggesting that we're, you know, and anyone who's on that political side of the aisle, it's, I've, I've, I've kind of owned the principle of, of, of free speech. I, I think it's weird that people on the left are saying it's a ruse, that it's actually the principle's pretty fundamental. It's just funny, man, like free speech guy, like you go, look, if most of the country, right, who aren't on Twitter every day, if they just happen to catch you using that as an insult, they're not even going to hear it as an insult. They're going to go, yeah. oh, right, yeah, no, all my life I thought free speech was a really great thing. Who is this free speech guy? Where can I get some of his content? It's, it's, it's one of the strangest things. And, and <laughs> again and again, I'm told, well, you know, you're only from promoting free speech because you, you want to be able to be racist. And I'm like, well, that's weird because I've, I'm not a racist and I don't say racist things. So why would I want suddenly, you know, it's this assumption that you must have some sort of ulterior motive if you want to defend the foundational principle of liberal democracy. It's like a domestic, you know, that one of those arguments in a couple where it's going a certain way and then they start throwing this other shit in and you go, oh, you're not willing to be reasonable about this because you kind of know you're in the wrong. I'm operating on a steady death con too, but you're going free for, you, you've got a Cuban missile crisis going 
before I've even scrambled some fucking fighter jets here. There's so much what you'd call gaslighting going on in this in, in this entire debate. And, you know, and it just fits in with a broader thing about, you know, the ones you'll have heard a lot of things like uh, cancel culture is a right wing myth, um, which is a funny one as well. And, and it, because the evidence of cancel culture is so overwhelming and easy to find, it just takes yeah. a quick Google yeah. search. Um, and it's and or the culture war is a right wing concoction. That's the other thing. Uh, and the people who say that are the people who have stoked the culture war. The people at, at the Guardian, the leftist identitarians. Uh, it's really weird. It's like you start a fight, yeah. you, you put all your pe- you put all your men in place, you start the battle, and then you just say, "Oh, the other side just made this up, man." Well, it's I not do real- think that that's a, a response to realizing how damaging it is to the brand of the left, because the, the idea be. of the left has become packaged up like where they've just suddenly gone, "Oh fuck, we lost heavily in 2019." Look, a lot of people do just think we're a bit lame, especially working class people. And, and, and they sort of tried to, it's, it's a way of just stepping away just a bit from some yeah. of the wackier ends of the debate. It could be, but it's also a way to evade the debate, you know, because if I, like someone like me who will criticise the culture war because I can't stand it and I want it to come to an end, um, it's very easy then to say that I am the culture warrior by criticising mm. the excesses of the of the identity politics left. Um, so it's, it's almost a ruse. You don't have to... You know, and, and and the thing is, the things that they're trying to implement, you know, to take an example from the other day or even today, you know, the suggestion that uh, babies are racist, you know, that study in America that's saying that babies at the, at the age of three months are racist, you know, and then someone will come out and criticise that mm. and they'll say, why, you're just one of these culture warriors, why are you just... Because they don't see that the phrase "babies are racist" is a is is a, a culture war manoeuvre. I mean, know? babies, let's be honest, are like, they are some of the most superficial sort of people they do they do apparently respond better to better looking people they are obnoxious like that i i I can totally accept that but i don't think they're racist no i i think that they respond better to better looking people but i don't think they care if that beauty comes from a black or white face i just think if you're serious about tackling racism in society i don't think a crash is the place to begin i just think that they're incredibly like vain and hollow but they're not quite full racist. Maybe they're the engines of the culture or the racist baby. Yeah. First up, could every, all the white babies here, please just apologize. <laughs> I know you're six months old, but you have already done some stuff. You're already benefiting from something. Yeah. But of course yeah. that's, that's what the, that is, is at the heart of the culture war. It's shit like that. It's racist babies. <laughs>